Today, I wanted to share with you a really cool piece of free and open source software that I know not everyone watching this video will have a use case for this because it's kind of a specialty piece of software. Not everyone needs a teleprompter. And this is what we're talking about today, QPrompt, which is a software teleprompter. And the reason it's a software teleprompter, of course, most teleprompters, when we talk about a teleprompter, we're talking about pieces of hardware. We're talking about either a small computer monitor or a large tablet that involves a mirror in some way that shows scrolling text. You know, usually it's set up right in front of a camera above or below a, a, a video camera. So think about your news reporters or whatever. They're typically reading off a teleprompter, right? They have these hardware teleprompters. Well, you know, you don't really need these, these expensive monitors or tablets with this mirror system system, you know, for a teleprompter, you can actually just use your cheap, plain Jane computer monitors, right, by using a piece of software like QPrompt. And all this is, it's a window that's going to open up and it's going to have your script that you load, that you feed into it, and it's going to have this scrolling text and you can read off of your computer monitor as if it was a teleprompter. One of the great things about QPrompt is it's cross-platform, meaning it works on Windows, Mac, and Linux, as well as Android devices. So if you want to throw this thing on an Android phone or Android tablet, you can use it on those devices as well. As far as packaging formats, if you're on Linux, you can see download the app image for Linux. And because that's prominently displayed, I'm assuming that's the main version they focus on is the app image. But you can see they also package it in the Snap Store as well as over on FlatHub. So you can get it as an app image, as a Snap, as a flat pack. On Arch Linux, I was able to find QPrompt in the AUR. It's not in the the main repositories, but it is available in the AUR on Arch Linux or any Arch based Linux distribution. For those interested in the licensing information, if you go to their GitHub, you can find the source code on GitHub. You can see it is licensed under the GPL v3. So it is free and open source software. If you want to know what language it's written in, I do notice that it is a cute app. So I'm assuming it's C++ and it does look like there is some C++ and QML in the code. So this is definitely a cute application. So let me show you Q prompt in action. So let me switch to an empty workspace and let me just go ahead and run Q prompt. And this is Q prompt out of the box. And I've got this window full screen, but if I wanted to, you know, I could adjust this, you know, especially if you're on Windows or a Mac, you're probably not using a tiling window manager. It's probably going to be a floating window, but you can, of course, toggle it full screen. You can leave full screen to get back into your standard floating mode as well. One of the first things I noticed when I first started playing with QPrompt is, you know, it can display images. You can see this right here. This is actually an image inserted. So it's not just for throwing text in here, right? You can actually add images if you want. Uh, if I actually want to go ahead and start the prompter, I, I think most people are immediately going to play with it by starting the prompter. So hit the start prompter button here. Then it changes the screen a little bit. You get this little crosshair in the center. You get the, the two arrows on the side. You see it focuses on this this center area of the screen you can see because it's colored black and then we have the upper band and the lower band here that are slightly grayish in background color so it's really the center area that you should be focusing on hit start prompting again and the prompter starts doing its thing it starts scrolling if you want to adjust some of the scrolling right you can actually play with the velocity here if you want so you have a slider if i really bump it up you can see we can move along quite a bit right Obviously, you can play with the font as well if you want to play with the font style as far as the uh, bold italics. Uh, you, you can play with the font face, the font size. You can also play with the colors as far as the, uh, the foreground color and the background colors. Let me go ahead and return to edit mode. Of course, that stops the prompter. So where I stopped just now here in the text, you'll see this word here. It has a underline and an overline, right? It's got two lines uh, above and below it. And what is the deal with that? Well, this is a marker because you can actually have these markers. Think of them as uh, chapters, as bookmarks, essentially. If I actually open the sidebar, we've got this icon here that will open the little sidebar. And you can see I have these markers, including uh, this word here, localization.qprompt.apt is what this is, you know, although localization is abbreviated by L10N, but that's what that means, right? And if I click on it, it would take me to that chapter. Apparently there is a bookmark somewhere for qprompt.app. If I click that, it will go to that section. And then at the top, 
there was a cube prompt bookmark so or a marker here and you can see at the very top when we started we had this word that was set as a marker if i want to add other markers maybe i want to set you know our goal as a marker there is this icon here to set a marker and now when i go back to the sidebar you can see our goal is there so if i go back to q prompt and then maybe click on our goal you know i can quickly move between those markers and obviously that would be extremely useful if you had a very long script that you were feeding into a teleprompter and you needed to be able to quickly navigate you know to uh, various places and a very lengthy script also you you have these buttons here I believe these will also move forward and backwards amongst the markers so if I click the back yeah I'll go to Q prompt if I click forward I'll go back to our goal click forward again I go to Q prompt dot app now let me scroll back to the very top of the application now at the very top here in the panel at the the top bar here of course you have the start prompter button which you're going to use all the time and of course the full screen button you're probably going to use uh, every time you actually use this you'll probably launch the application full screen you'll get out of full screen when you're done but you do have this really neat uh, timer button if, if you wanted to set a timer to your uh, your prompter you also have this countdown button which is kind of neat if I actually go to countdown and set duration by default it's set to one second but I've bumped it up to a five second uh, countdown iteration and then now that I have that set if I start the prompter we're now going to have a five second countdown at the beginning so start prompter and then we get the button here begin countdown so let's go ahead and click it a second time five four three two one and then it begins the scrolling so very very cool for the timer button if i click on the timer button you can see enable timers i can click on that it's enabled and click on stopwatch and you can see i get a little watch start the prompter uh well we're going to begin the countdown five four three two one and let's see if we actually get yeah you know, we get our our timer as well so it's going to time as we go forward which could be useful if you have if you know exactly how much time your speech or presentation or whatever it is you're doing you may find having that timer useful as far as some control settings for the application if you click on the little icon here the three lines your little hamburger menu if you will you click on that and you get your standard kind of menu where you can uh, save a document or you can actually open your control settings which is what i'm going to do you have keyboard inputs so if you click on that you do have several key bindings available for you if you want to use those one other cool feature that you can do there is this button here in the uh, toolbar the search button here if you wanted to you could search the document and again if this was a very lengthy script having that search feature is a really nice touch uh, that could be extremely useful as well so that was just a very quick introduction to QPrompt now one thing to know about QPrompt is the main creator of QPrompt he originally created a different teleprompter program called the imaginary teleprompter I believe is what it's called it's again free and open source software and I think you'll find the imaginary teleprompter in many Linux distributions repositories to this day, but he no longer works on that project because he created this new, uh, more modern project, QPrompt. So if you're a user of the imaginary teleprompter, you may want to go ahead and move over to QPrompt. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul, Astri, Tien, Run, War, Gen 2, and Ubuntu, and and Willie, these guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at QPrompt would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software like QPrompt, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.